welcome to the Swift Half, your weekly session of chat from the UK OCR and adventure running scene. Each week, pub landlord Alan and our favourite regular Ian discuss races, runners and anything else that comes to mind. So pull up a pew, pour yourself a drink and join us for the Swift Half. You're listening to the 45th most popular podcast for people who think that the Paps of Glencoe are a Highland drag act. Ian, my friend, welcome to the Swift Half. How are you? I'm great, Alan, and happy Friday, listeners. It is Friday, we promise you. <laughs> Friday, this is, this is the first Friday in May, so is this a bank, it's a bank holiday weekend again? It is a bank holiday weekend. I'm really concerned that on the... Uh, I want to say the 13th or the 15th of May. Yeah, it'll be the 15th. I don't think anyone's going to turn up for work. They're just going to be used to just like just every Monday's a bank holiday. <laughs> people, hey, on the 15th, though, people might not turn up for work because we have got um, nuclear and nuclear fit on, on 13th and 14th. So people just might not turn up anyway. That's true. People might be absolutely exhausted from doing nuclear and the new nuclear fit. Alan, did you see if you got the medals out? Oh, James puts some amazing medals, doesn't he? He really does. Uh, just shared the reel on uh, UK HXR's Facebook, so I'll go over the. But yeah, Alan, it it looks really cool. I just love what, he, what James does down there, and he, he does everything so well. If it's not, if it's if he doesn't do it, everything, he does, he does well. If he can't do it well, he doesn't do it. Yeah. That was a bit of tongue tie for uh, yeah. for today, wasn't it? <laughs> and that's an hour before I even have a drink. <laughs> well, speaking of which, Alan, what you're on? Um, well, I'm I'm on a um, brew dog lost lager, um, only because I mean I sent you the picture of um, Rob's barbecue last year, and I went down to Rob's barbecue this year on on Sunday, um, and luckily it didn't set fire to the garden like it did last year. It was very much more sedate. So, and because it was a bit more sedate, I didn't drink all my lost lager. So I, um, I took twenty cans down and I brought six back. So yeah, I got some so lost lager. You took twenty cans down and you brought six. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, all afternoon it was good. It was good. I mean, you was down at um, High Rocks, being busy. Um, you and Jen doing doubles. We were indeed. Yeah, we we did doubles, which was a lot of fun actually, Alan. I, I'll mention this. Uh, Listener, we do have a fitness racing podcast where we do a full review, but I don't mind giving you a little tease. You know what was fun, Alan? What was fun? The burpees. <laughs> burpees are not fun. You're going to tell me now you got Jen to do every one, didn't you? I didn't. I did the majority of them, but it's so much civilised being able to stand to one side when you've had enough as opposed to just falling on the floor and looking like you're not getting up. <laughs> I'll I'll, I'll I'll stand to one side. Come by, come by. <laughs> but, well, like little sheep herder. Yes, exactly. But yeah, so when I had enough, I just got Jen to to carry on, and then I had a little rest, and then went went. Oh, maybe High Rocks could do that. You know, maybe you have some kind of escalator thing. You know, like you have at um, at airports. But when you've done enough burpees, you can just step on there and move forward a little bit and go again. On like a really slow, slow escalator. <laughs> a really, really slow one, yeah. I, I saw one of the funniest videos ever of of that on some social media ones, and it was a rowing team or a rugby team. But anyway, they sat on this escalator and pretended to row all the way through the airport. And it was I've got to tell you, it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen them just sat down, just fake rows, just rowing away. <laughs> I've seen that with the Keo clan, would you believe? M Michelle and that lot have done that. Did they? Oh, I hadn't seen that one. I don't know if it's still available. It might have been a story. But yeah, Michelle, Keo and the, the rest of the clan were rowing, I presume, in Manchester Airport. Oh, <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, let's get back to drinking. What are you drinking? I am still trying to get through my beer fridge. We have a run wild today from Athletic Brewing. Oh, wow. I, they was um, out in America this weekend, wasn't there? Was it Savage Race? I believe so. Well, they are an American company, so I, I believe they do sponsor Savage Race. And really, we could do with them sponsoring more over here. Were they briefly a sponsor of Spartan last year, I want to say? I don't know if they're briefly a sponsor. I know Luke De Benedictus, I'm sure he took some some there and, and gave some freebies. Well, whether it was to friends and family, I don't know, or whether 
they were actually down there. I don't think they were down there as an official sponsor. Or well, maybe we were just an affiliate. I'm sure at the European Championships, they had a stand. I'm fairly sure they had right. a stand because I ended up getting a, a free free beer out of them, courtesy of Graham, who I think is also an ambassador. There we go. Is Graham an ambassador as well? Graham, you need to speak yeah. to him and get them to um, our podcast. We would happily promote their beer every weekend, wouldn't we? Yeah, if you just added some alcohol for you, it'd be fine. Um, bit of rum. Bit of rum dropped in there. Bit <laughs> of rum, it, it'll be fine. Maybe we're not the ideal audience for them thinking about <laughs> it. <laughs> Maybe, maybe the clue's in the name, Athletic. Yeah, that's definitely not, not me at the moment. I've, after my 60 mile the other week, I've, I've run this week twice. So both times I've run 10k. And saying that, I ran them quite well. So I was doing 55 minutes both times. But it didn't feel like 55 minutes. It felt like I was really doing 45 minutes. But in the same sentence, it didn't feel like I was running fast either. If that, It's hard to explain. Felt it, it in, my, in my, my body as I was running fast, but it didn't feel fast, but then it was like mid-fast. So running through treacle? Yeah, yeah. A little bit like running through treacle. No, um, that makes sense. You're, you're right. I went and did a little bit of a recovery spin on Tuesday, I want to say, um, after the weekend, and I couldn't get any power in my legs at all. Yeah, So I was feeling exhausted, but... Yeah, the little cadence thing just wasn't wasn't moving at all. What was it like getting to the wall balls? Because we'd never got into the wall balls before. Well, I've got to him once, but kind of. I, I got to it uh, with Mike, but oh, you did it with Mike as well, didn't you? Yeah. But this was first time I got to wall balls with the ability to do a wall ball. Because <laughs> if you remember last time with Mike, I managed to hurt myself on lunges as well. So. I think I did one wall ball with Mike, and then he basically did 99. Wow, wow. He did quite a good time at the weekend, Mike, as well. Did 126, something like that? He, he did excellent. And uh, he was, I think on Monday, he was judging, I think. So it was head judge at Spartan. Yep, the and weekend. then and then went to Monday to do High Rocks. Oh, wow. So judging at High Rocks and then doing, him, doing as well. Brilliant. Do, doing running as well at... Uh, and it was a great event, Alan. You would have enjoyed it. It was just a shame that, unfortunately, Rob was born a few years um, before High Rocks was a thing. You know, I, I had actually got plans about this weekend, and I was thinking, I'm going to go down to Spartan in the morning, watch the this, watch this super, film the super, then nip up to High Rocks in the afternoon, and then Rob last week dropped it on me that it was his birthday, and I was like, oh, yeah, it is, isn't it, mate? Cheers, thanks. Spoiling my weekend. I love this idea that you'd no clue it was his birthday until he told you. I really don't. I, it's one of them things, you know, like, I'm, I'm absolutely useless with birthdays. I've got a birthday, any dates, I am absolutely, I can do numbers and, and anything like that, but when it comes to dates and remembering dates, I am absolutely useless with it. I have to, I have to put it in my phone now, you know, like Wendy's birthday, um, our anniversary. You know, things, mind you, anniversary, that's going to be hard, isn't it? Because I've been married three times now, so that's even harder. <laughs> Have you ever done that with Wendy? Have you ever bought her a present on one of the ex-wife's anniversaries? I'm alive, Ian. Do you think I'd be alive if I'd ever done that? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Happy anniversary, it's not our anniversary. <laughs> yeah, that, that, would, that would be a complete and utter no-no. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a good job you built the Swift half out, outside. You you'd be getting mail sent there and paying council tax. <laughs> hey, the Swift half's got a bed in it at the moment. Um, because I've moved the Fulton out of the office, it's actually in the Swift half pub at this moment in time. <laughs> so, isn't your office also Harley's bedroom? Ah, well, you see, that's another thing. Now, I see Harley goes in the army soon. He doesn't come over here as much. Um, that's why we had the Fulton. He doesn't. He hasn't. He hasn't stopped here for quite a while now. And and when he did last time, he just slept on sofa. So it's like, why, why does he need a bedroom? I've got my office now. I've got my 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 gym stuff up here. I can train in comfort and and that it's much better with him. Um, can't wait for him to go to army though, because I, I just can't wait to go and like go running with him um, and show all his army buddies up. <laughs> <laughs> when is he enlisting? Um, hopefully September. Um, it goes in in the intake in September, so he's done everything he needs to do now. Put all his paperwork in. Um, he's going in as a um, some type of mechanic. He's not sure which one he's going to go in as yet, but it's going to be some type of mechanic. Um, I don't know. If he's going to specialise in 
anything on that. But yeah, he's got to go to Edinburgh for a, a recruitment, two-day recruitment test. Once he's done that, then he's in, in September. Oh, fa- fantastic. I really know nothing about the military, so you could have literally said anything there, Alan, and I, I would have <laughs> said, said the we, same. We do have a few people that listen. Dan Tick comes in the military, so we do we do have a few people who do listen to us. Um, wow, does that mean Harley's going to win the UK OCR series in a few years? Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, he's, spe- he's not a runner. He's not, he'd have to be fast now to be anywhere near and he's not right. So speaking of that, Alan, should we move on to some OCR news? Because this is an OCR show, and should we talk about the UK OCR series? Yes. Um, first race of the season. Um, amazing race down down there in Spartan, from what I'm told. Uh, some really, really strong, strong performances from a lot of runners. The big thing is, and um, Mark Dixon brought this to my attention, strange how in the men's section there was no British podium places. So the people in Europe were coming over. This is a is this a good sign? I think it is. I think it's, it's good for our sport over here because iron sharpens iron. And if they are really good, as in the Europeans are really good, then we'll have to compete against them. Well, our elite athletes will have to compete against them, Alan. You and me are not competing against them. <laughs> You're definitely not going to compete against them. Um, but no, amazing. It's great. That, I think it's good that they're coming over. I think it's it's great that they're coming over, competing against our athletes. Our athletes are sh- showing the showing what they what they're capable of. Um, so, do that, you have the results by any chance? I, funnily enough, I do. Yes. Um, so, first of all, I'm going to go through women's. Oh, Alan, before you do that, can I just pull up my predictions? Give me a sec. <laughs> okay. I know what you're going to get. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm ready, Alan. I'm I'm, I'm ready. Uh, who so was the ladies? All, let's go, ladies. Um, 15 elite women set off. That's wow. got to be one of the biggest skills they've had in a few years, I think, down in down there. I didn't predict that. Did not predict that. Even though um, I should have, because I did a prediction contest, so I knew the list of names. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the good things that I did like to see was some new faces in there, you know, um, coming up from age group and, and stepping up into the elite series. Um, well done. But we have a we had a bit of a, a new a new winner. Rachel Decker took the women's title. Oh, I got a by, second. You had a second, did you? Oh, I had a second. So close. <laughs> Who did you have for first, Ian? I had Andrea. Oh, and Andrea comes second. Oh, who'd have thought it? Who'd have thought that? Ellen Wells for third. No, sorry, I didn't have Ellen. But right, so it was. Could we go through them again? Rachel Decker. Rachel Decker, Andrea Berquez, and Ellen Wells in third. Um, because I put all seven, I put eight places down on our sheet. I'm going to go all eight. Get all, give okay. them shout outs. By all means. Um, fourth, Federica de Carrier. Fifth, Josie Lloyd. Sixth, Kate Steelwell. Seventh, Karen McQuarrie. And eighth, Becky Neal. So a big shout out to all them. F- fantastic. I I, I will say I, I had Feddy in as my third place. So I think I'll still get some points for that. You did, but actually, I, no, I'm going to wait because I, I actually predicted two of these in the right place. But I'm going to come to the predictions in a bit, a little bit later. Okay. Um, we're just going to go you through your predictions now. We'll come. It sounds, sounds like a plan. Yeah. <laughs> in the men's now, I, I don't want to butcher these names, but Christian Paremba first place, Ollie and Stefan second, Samuel Costella third place. I had number one and number two. I had um, James for number three. <laughs> I'm loving this. Yeah. <laughs> The thing is, no one can see this, but you're actually saying this with just a straight face. And just a little grin, but just a straight face, I get this. Um, I've got it here. You, you can you can see, kind of. <laughs> uh, fourth place, massive shout out, Jason Brunnock. Um, no one put him as the top male, um, in the, as, I mean, as in the top British male. A lot of people might have second and third British male. But no one put so massively well done to him. Um, taking the scouts of Morgan Maxwell, Carl Bell in six, spoke to Carl today, apparently missed the spear. Um, really, really well pleased though he is. This is his first major competitive race, as he put it, against serious OCR people. So for him to finish six is super happy. Seventh, Jack Carpenter, and eighth, Dasos Ganella. F- fantastic to everyone. But can we just check, Alan? I'm right in thinking that for the UK OCR series, 
we are combining age group and elite, aren't we? So we, we have announced the elite, but in terms of points, some age groupers might figure into that list somewhere. They don't figure into the top eight, Ian. So I would look through them all. They don't figure into top eight, but you are quite right. Um, now then, Liam, 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 and I have, I'm going to, going to shout at me now because I know this is podcast. Um, Liam Mitchell, um, top age group, 55 minutes, and I think he gets about eighth or ninth over, no, about ninth or tenth overall. Um, just drops out of that eight, but yeah, um, absolutely stonking run by by Liam. He did make this prediction. If we did the podcast, and then we go back to the podcast. Um, that I recorded with him, he actually made this prediction that this year he's going for age group title and then step into up to elite in 2024 and he's going to take OCR by storm. Perfect. I love confidence. Yeah. It's the first race of the season. He's gone out yeah. and done it. He's done everything he said he was going to do. So amazing. Keep it up. Right. The prediction. second race is going to be nuclear, isn't it? Nuclear in just over a week's time. Yeah. Nuclear just over a week's time. And then we've got Rude Rampage. Rude Rampage, which is down south, I believe, um, were Battle of Blaze was or not Battle of Blaze, the other one. Battle of Lansdowne, down that area. Lansdowne, yeah. I think it's the same team, isn't it? Yes, same D- DB Max events, yeah. They put it on. Yeah. Okay. And then we back up to Total Warrior. Um first okay. of July, I believe Total Warrior is. Which quick update for people on Total Warrior as well, because I'm having a few I'm trying to get in touch with Total Warrior. Their their first it wave, the elite wave, is sold out. Um we do know there's about eight or nine people that have contacted me directly. I am trying to get you guys in. Um, just bear with me. Total Warrior, although it's been a big company, um, when it comes to emails, they're not right up at the forefront of emails. And the guy who, who's been in charge for a while um, is currently not well. So um, someone else has taken over. He's trying to find his feet. I am going to get get you all in. I'm really, really trying my hardest. Um, watch this space, and I'll come back to you on that. Got a few questions on that I have, Ian. So just want to pull that. No, out. that's fine, and it's nice that we're able to to do that. I guess for Alan, it's actually a good sign in a way. It's a sign that if you want to race, you need to start booking races early. Some of the big events, Total Warrior, definitely got to book it early. Um, it's always a sellout. The first eight or nine waves are always a sellout. It's it sells so quickly. Like nuclear, they've kind of like targeted their local market, haven't they? Because there'll be a lot of people at Total Warrior. Because like, you're going to try and go down if you can, aren't you? I, I will be at Total Warrior. I'm ninety nine point nine percent certain I will be at Total Warrior. For me, it's less than an it's less than an hour drive away, so I do tend to go up for it every time. Um, I was thinking trying to fit it in maybe to my my ultra training because they put an ultra event on there, and I was thinking maybe I can fit it in. But now I'm going to go up. I'm going to. Um, hopefully I'm going to be fit this year because anyone who saw me last year realised that I had got a bad bat last year. I couldn't do any running with any anything and relied on everyone else to film. But this year I'm going to be there doing a bit of rabbiting, hopefully catch people, um, be out of breath quite a lot of time. Is this your way of saying that you're going to go up there and suddenly pull you back again as soon as you see enough volunteers to do rabbiting? Could. <laughs> Could happen. <laughs> Oh, speaking of videoing, actually, Alan, can I give a shout out to Evie Wary? You certainly can, yeah. Well, I just did, obviously, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Evie came at the last minute to help us out at London, and you should see some of the stuff that she got, Alan. She's put up a reel already, like a teaser reel, which is on her Instagram, which I want to say is Fitness with Evie. Let me just double check that. And so it is. Yeah, fitness with EV underscore at the end yeah. of it. And she's put a, a reel up on it, and it's really, really good. I've seen it. It's yeah. amazing. It's professional it's, quality. It's so good that Instagram thinks it's a, a a professional one, and it hasn't got nearly enough views that it deserves. We, we've had this chat before, haven't we, that yeah. we can put really high-quality stuff on and be Instagram uh just don't place it because we want you to pay to boost it. And then we can put, well, we can put stuff that I've shot. Yeah. And suddenly it just um, gets um, t- uh, tens of thousands of views. I, I've said this, and it's not just it's Instagram, it's TikTok. A prime example is our biggest TikTok um, video is literally me. And when I was driving down to the race that Charlie met, mentioned, and I saw a, a, a speed camera. And I took a little video of the speed camera 
then twisted the camera around when I stopped and put a little picture of me with my thumbs up. Um, it's had 17,000 views. Yet we've put up quality things on TikTok and we're struggling to get like one to 2,000. Yeah, it, it's bizarre. I'm just looking at the fitness racing one now, Alan. Like some of the biggest uh, ones which have got lots of, lots of views are like some of that I've done of people doing burpees. One which we did in, in Manchester, which was an empty arena, and the intern just walked the length showing every everything. And meanwhile, we've put up some some cool ones like uh, we put up Alan, didn't we, talking um, on that. We, you yeah. spent a lot of time on camera at that. And it's not even hit a thousand yet. It, it's bizarre. Doesn't make sense, Ian. Does, doesn't make sense, that. No, but... Listener, if you have a minute, go over to Fitness with Evie, have a look at that that reel because it's really good quality and we will start to use some of that content in the future and probably get about 10 views because if Evie can only uh, manage uh, a few thousand so far, um, then, yeah, we're, we're doomed. I say a few, yes. I think it's about a thousand at the time uh, of recording this. So fingers crossed it catches fire for Alan. I, I think so. I, the the what she's done is perfect. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it looks like one Hyrox would put up, doesn't it? Yeah. But did, we, did you know she used some type of editing software where you put them in and it just chooses them, or did she put them all together herself? Did you stitch them all together herself? Do you know, I'm not sure. But what I do know is to, for using it, all she used was her phone. She yeah. does have a new phone with a new camera. I think it was a 13. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's um, really, really cool. And yeah, and thank you again, Evie, for uh, for popping uh, popping along and um, getting some footage far better than anything me and Alan can manage. Too right, too right. Um, talking about friends contacting us and that, I spoke to Katie Joyce on Tuesday, I'm going to say, and she told me one of the most hilarious things I've heard about Spartan in years. In years. So quite early on, you ran and then you hit the eight foot walls. Your Spartans race is always like the run. The first the first obstacle is an eight foot wall. So as Katie gets to it, yeah, there's no step up. So you know how tall Katie is. You know she couldn't get over this wall, and the technical officials are there. You're not going to believe what happens. She happens to just walk around the other side of the wall, and Spartan to put the walls back to front. The step was on the other side. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> A quick look at the rules, and the rules say it doesn't say you've got to go over it one way or another. So all the young, all the women there was there's about sixteen and seventeen. She told me that literally couldn't get over it on their own, but didn't but didn't want to. You know, it was a race, so they all went around the other side and came back over it the wrong way because they then they could go up with the step. But you had to put the Spartan walls all the wrong way round on the beast. So this is the beast on the Saturday. Oh the gosh! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dear me, there were That's some great crappy. times in the beast. Man, I, I think that the whole races were absolutely amazing. Some some fantastic things. Uh, do you have the results for the beast? I know we did the UK OCR one, but the beast. So, I, I'm asking, asking now, me. aren't you? you I'm are absolutely asking, asking now. <laughs> While you're doing that, should I give some Decafit news? Go on, give some Decafit news while I find these. So, in we've talked about how in Clivero there was a Decca Strong. Um, we went to him, this is going to be a Decca Mile the weekend of May the 20th, which keep May the 20th in your, your minds and listeners because we'll come back to that later. But there's now another Decca Strong being put on by another gym, but being put on not at their gym, but at another event. At another event. Yeah, so the gym in question is CW1. We mentioned them a couple of weeks ago as the new Decca gym. Yeah. And they are putting it on at, I'm going to get this wrong, but they are putting it on at Adventure Snowdonia, which also has Strive Fest as well. It's a fitness festival that's going on in Snowdonia, so Decca Strong is just going to be one of the events on it. And it sounds really cool, Alan, but one bad thing. It's June the 24th. ETM. ETM, Decafit Malaga, and a load of other stuff. Oh, what a bad weekend. What a bad weekend. I can't believe that Decca's putting two events on, though, in, in Europe on the same days. Well, you've got to remember that Decafit Spain is its own franchise. 
the deckers over here all run by their, their gym. So evidently it was just poor plan. And plus, it's probably a case, Alan, of we're probably not target audience for this um, decker that's going on on June 24th. It's probably people who are already going doing the adventure fitness event. Oh, right. So they're trying to... So Decker's trying to tap into that market to fetch a few of them over to that. I like that. That's a good idea, that. Yeah, exactly. And again, I I should point out that it's not Decker as a central body here. It Mm is CW1 who have a... They don't have a franchise. They're a Decker affiliate gym, so they can put on Decker events. So they have teamed up with Strive Fest and with this adventure thing to put on a Decker. I don't know if it's going to be... Inside or outside, to be fair, but it's a deck of strong that's going on. So if you're not at ETM, if you're not at Malaga, and you happen to be in Snowdonia on June 24th, uh, tickets are 50 quid, you get a T-shirt and a medal. like it, mate. like it. T-shirt and medal. 50 quid, bargain. I've got some Spartan results now. Awesome. Beast. And we had Roman Toth won, Olion Stefan second, Israel Fedo Alvarez in third place. That's the men. Um Top for the UK, Fergal Keeney from Ireland was in fifth place. Um, Luke de Benedict in seventh and Conor Wickens in eighth. In the women, um, Claudia Zubalate. I hope I've got that right. First place, Daphne Spean, second. Third was Carla Mashila. Um, and then we had Anne Rees, was the top British lady in fourth place, followed by Libby Joyce in fifth. Well done, Libby. Is that her first elite beast? I wanna, it might be, it might not be. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think I think you're quite right. I think it, it might well be. So was it was there a sprint on the Saturday as well? I think there was. Are there any results for a sprint? There are, but it doesn't actually say it doesn't say elite. So maybe it was just a, an open. I think open yeah. Saturday? I think when we do a trifecta, we don't run an elite because the sprint's happening after. All right. Um some new names for us, so I'll give them a shout out. First place, Will Simpson, Callum. Bonnie and Reese Statham Quilty was in third. And on the women's side, uh, we have to scroll down a little bit for this. Oh, it's a bit strange. It doesn't have none of the women on there. That's really weird, that. It goes from, on the results page, it goes from fifth place to 223rd place. That doesn't That's, make sense, does it? No, that really doesn't make, make sense. Uh, evidently, Spartans in turn uh, wasn't paying attention to the sprint on Saturday. I wonder if it's because we've got a sprint on Saturday and the Sunday. It's just messed with the results somewhat. Sunday sprint open. Let's have a look at that then. Um, James Burton got third on Sunday. Rhys Burgess first, Nicholas Milne second, James Burton third. Um, we have gone and got... No, again, it goes from 15th down to 1,080. Weird. Oh, well. Spartan can't organise the results. There we go. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. And to be fair, the, the sprint, it's open anyway. It's like giving Tough Mudder results. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Sorry to those people who we, we just gave podiums to and then ruined it. Sorry about that, guys. Mentioning Tough Mudder there, though, that's a good segue because we know Tough Mudder's at the same venue this week, which meant that Spartan could have the, uh, use the ditches the big pit, pits that took me to fill with water for Funky Monkey, and they put the um, the, the ladder, swingy ladder thing that they have at Spartan. Now, I don't know what they call them because I'm not with Spartan obstacles, but I, I, the, the ladder one, that, the caving ladders that swung, which was great to see. Yeah. Honestly, I can't remember the name either, but it's Spartan, so it probably literally is caving ladders over water. <laughs> Yeah, they don't have no no no. So, um, what's the word I'm looking for when someone comes up with a good idea? They, they they're not very imaginative, imaginative when it comes yes. to yeah. I, I'm fairly sure if it had Block Ness, it would have been called rotating plastic cylinders. <laughs> yeah, but but ain't it good? Do you think I want I, I want to take credit for this, Ian, because we talked about this several times about we don't get obstacles over water like we did years ago. You know. Um, at Dirty Dozen and things like that. You think they listened to us? And it was. Can we take credit for it? No, I think it's literally just the case that they're running the same venue, and you've already incurred the cost of extraction. So why not use it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're quite right. Going to be a good course this weekend, though. Down for Tough Mudder. It is. There was a map that our good friend Martin shared. Uh, have you got it handy? Um, I have. Yes, I've got it handy. Obstacle seventeen. Yep. Um, it's currently not being announced, but I don't know. 
it's blurry. We were saying this um, before we started. I think it could be just for tip, but I really hope it's not because that's not exactly an exciting obstacle. No, it's not, is it? Um, but th- there's some good good obstacles there, 31 obstacles in total. 31. That t- that's jumped out at you and said, hey. Well, I'm curious as to Widow's Peak is a, a new one on me, I think. I, I've, n- I've never done that one, but um, I mean, I d- that's not a lot to me because I'm, I'm only, I'm not nowhere near as many as you and and that and the ones I did were, tend to be more years ago than more recently. Yeah, Widow's Peak doesn't jump out at me as one I recognise because obviously you've got Black Widow, which is the um, slight lines um, which are strung all over the place and you got to go across. But yeah, I don't know what that one is. I'd be curious. Maybe it is like a Black Widow variation. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, of course, you've got stuff like Block Nesva. You've got Quagmire, which is, is mud. Uh, we do have Electro... Electric eel and electro shock. Everyone loves having two electric uh, obstacles on there. Yeah, yeah. I think you got a good run in. You know, twenty th- from twenty four onwards. That's a good run home, Mark. Yeah. Well, you know why it is. Go on. Well, it's because if you look, um, they all have green next to them, which means we're on the five k route. Right. Right. So you come in. You come in. You. I'll, I'll give them out because people don't see the map while they listen to this. We've got Cage Crawl, Devil's Beard, Killer Gorilla, Everest, Art Kenema, Pyramid Scheme, Mudderhorn, and Electro. That's an, an amazing finish. It is, and of course, what it, the reason for it, Alan, is because that will be on the Infinity. We've got Infinity this week. Yeah. So the Infinity. That's where they they can do the fifteen k route, or they can do the five. I think they can use the ten k route. Didn't Giles tell us the other week they can use the ten k now as well? I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm not sure if the ten k is live on the Saturday. So listener, please, please don't go arguing with uh, Tough Mud HQ saying <laughs> that the Swift Half told you you could use ten k route. But yeah, because if you if you combine it, Alan, uh, you start a bit earlier. You've got Kiss of Moor, Block Nest Monster, Quagmire, and then Cage Crawl. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's going to be one hell of a 5K. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be one muddy Cage Crawl after Quagmire. Yeah. But don't you have three of them? The Texas Oldham, Kiss of Mud, Block Nest, and Quagmire. They're all in. They're on the green ones as well. They are, and as are uh, Hero Walls and Bell Bonds. Yeah. Oh, going to be. It's going to be an amazing thing. Um, unfortunately, I can't be down. I'm working again. Ian. Why do I always seem to be working at weekends at minute? It's because you don't want to take me on at an infinity race. <laughs> That's probably about right. That's probably about right. But I do want to take you on in the prediction competition again. Now, joking aside, you didn't get your entries in. Did you not come through? No, they didn't. They didn't come through. So How, how did that not happen? You... you... <laughs> Maybe because you didn't want to put your pen to paper and put them in. So I want to talk about the prediction competition because it's been brought to my attention. So I think James Burton messaged me and said, um, because I'm going to repeat his, repeat what he said. He said, because he's lazy, he didn't get his predictions in. So can we do it as in very much the series and do best four out of them? So best four results. What's your thoughts, Ian? I, I think I like it. Yeah, I'd be happy happy with that. Although, yeah, maybe best four, or maybe because it's a prediction contest, the reason we do best four out of eight for the actual series is because of the fact that you can, yeah, it's quite expensive to get to all the races. Yeah, yeah. This is literally finding five minutes in your day and a live internet connection. So what do we say, best five or best six then? I'm not sure. Tell you what, Alan... Let's put it to a vote. Let's put, uh, we'll put it on the UK OCR Instagram page. Yeah. And we will do a, a vote for 24 hours. And if we remember, we will do it on Friday. And because we'll forget, we'll do it some point between Friday and next week. <laughs> and we're going to have a vote. So best five or best six are going to win. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think even, fa- fa- we'll put in James's option as well. We'll put four in. So four, five, four, five or six. Or six. Yeah. And whichever wins, we'll go with it. And what are we going to do point-wise? Because at a minute we give like five points to get in a prediction of someone finishing the exact position and two points. So yeah, a total of points. So this week I won with 16. Yes, get in there. Um, and I actually genuinely won, by the way, Ian. This is, you know, you know that. Um, Josh Lowry was saying second. 
Luis Ferryman um, beat Emzo 7 on the tiebreak question, and then Libby Joyce um, in fifth place. Do we give them points that they actually got in the race and tally them up? Or would you want to give, like, very much like the series, so if you come first, you get 500 points and then 485 or whatever? Oh, that's... The- but you know what? Let's have a think about it. I assume we're basically if people are racing, so you you count in each event almost like a race in and of itself. So you'd get yeah. five hundred points for your first place. Yeah. Whereas the other way of doing it would, of course, be that you just take whichever is your best four results. You just take that into an overall. You know what? I'm not sure. I don't know, Alan. Let, let's have a think about this. Be, let's have the audience decide, eh? Oh, we'll have two polls over the weekend. Yeah, we'll we'll do do that poll first of four or five, six, and then we will uh, we'll put that out to a vote as well. Because I mean, we see the nicest way, Alan. You're biased. Yeah. If, if it was six events, and we're I'm, I'm, we have an open debate here now. From if it was six events, I think keeping the points you get at each race, like the sixteen, the fifteen, the thirteen, and thirteen, and that, I think that would work because then you've got more chance of not a tie break. Whereas if we had best four, I think you've got a much closer chance of a tie break. No, that's, that's very right. Uh, oh, God. James, now you're going to make me f- think of um, tiebreaker stuff. <laughs> you're just adding to my workload. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes. We all like to add to your workload, Ian. That's what it's all about. The tiebreaker is whoever has donated the most in Patreon... <laughs> and <laughs> in buy me a beer wins. <laughs> and hey, that could be it. There's loads of people done that. So um, big thank out to all our patrons. Um, yeah, that, that's not serious. On Monday's podcast, by the way, we're going to give them a shout out on Monday's podcast. But that's, do we have do we have Monday's um, podcast recorded? Uh, well, they're actually recording it while we're recording this. The Who's Hot team are recording Monday's podcast. Oh, wow. Do you know? Do we have their link? No. Oh, we, could oh, do, we could do a live jumping, could we? We could do a live drop in. <laughs> oh, how good would that be? Um, oh, well, that's going to be next time, aren't it? Yeah, edit this bit out so they don't know. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to. Um, I put a message on on our notes here, and I want to talk about this pub games, Ian. Because okay. we're in a pub. Yeah, I went out Friday. Yeah, have you ever played darts in a pub? I have played darts in a pub. I think I'm banned from playing darts in a pub now. Well, banned from a couple of pubs, but carry on. Well, there's a secret pub in Barnsley Open called The Works. So to get into The Works, you have to go to a, a nondescript door, as in it's just a door at the back of a building. You open the door, you walk up four flights of stairs, and you go into this beautiful pub called The Works. And they've got dart boards in there. They've got four dart boards, got a pool table, shuffle board table, another thing. So I said to... Um, the three people I was out drinking with, I said, shall we have a game of darts? You know, just a little, you know, we would had a couple of pints and let's have a little game of darts. And I went, yeah, yeah. So I goes up to the bar. Now, the last time I played darts, he asked landlord, can I have a set of darts to borrow? He gave him a pound as a deposit. You went and played darts. So he says to me, he says, yeah, of course you can, mate. He says, um, how many is playing? I says, oh, there'll be four of us. He went, how long for? I says, 30 minutes. Do you want to have one? Just while we have this pint, that's all. Just a quick throw. He went, yeah, no problems. That'll be 16 pound, please. Wait, what? Yeah, wait, what? £16 pound to play darts in. I can't believe it. Is that not like the gross national product of Barnsley? Well, I thought it was as well. 30 minutes of playing darts, four people. It's like, I don't, don't get me wrong, it were a good dart board. You didn't have to use chalk. You had a television screen above that had all the numbers on. When you threw your darts, you didn't even have to add up. It automatically knew what you did on the board. And these were proper darts as well, not like them plastic tip coated ones. So they were proper darts. So it were a good dart board, and it was sixteen pound for thirty minutes worth of darts. That is hilarious. <laughs> I didn't want to look tight in front of my mates, so I actually paid it. Wish I hadn't paid it. <laughs> Surely, if the mates, they know you. Yeah, they do, but they don't know I'm tight. I just uh... let them bite first four rounds. I always bite last round. Me, um, if I bite last round, then I usually get away with one at end at night. I'm oh. joking with that, by the way. I am actually the first person to buy a round every time I go out. So It is annoying that, isn't it, if you're going out with regular friends, if you've always got that friend who buys the last round yeah. every single time. Yeah, it, it, that, it, that is one of the things. that I, I haven't got many friends who do that, I've got to admit. 
but yeah, I used to have one or two friends that are, that are no longer friends that were like that. Oh. Alan, can I ask you to do something live on air? Because wh- why not? Go on. Go, go on um, UKOCR on Facebook. UKOCR on Facebook, yeah. Yeah. Find the map we shared of Tough Mudder. Yeah. Save it. You've got an iPhone, haven't you? I have, yeah. Uh, hold it and save it to your um, photos. Hold it and save it to my photos, yeah. So you've done it now, yeah. Go to your photos. Yeah. Go to my photos. And pull up um, the actual map again, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Where the actual route is, hold your thumb on it for a second. Oh, what's that? What happened there? Exactly. Oh. A, no, a no stop. Oh, wow. That's a little Easter egg, isn't it? Oh, that, that, that's like a... Is that showing you the... What is it showing you? Because it's a whole different map. Yeah, I, I have no clue what, what it is showing you. But, yeah, listener, if you've got an iPhone, I don't know if this works on, on Android, go to um, Tough Mudder. Not Tough Mudder, sorry. Go to UK OCR, find the London West map, and save it to your photos, and then just hold your thumb on the route, and it will probably Maybe shine or something. Yeah. And then move it off, and you'll get a really nice Easter egg. That's amazing. And yeah, how did you find that out? I have no clue. I, I literally, as you were talking, I was I was just trying to zoom in on the map. I just held my thumb on it, and it started flashing. That is absolutely amazing. Well, that's a proper Easter egg. I like that. It, it's really cool, isn't it? If I remember, I'll, I'll take a video of it, and we will share it shortly after this show comes out. Yeah. Oh, man, that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm going to do that with all, all pictures now I find on um, online and do it now. It's, well, it's like, it looks like it's got a whole new map that takes yeah, you through the woods and that. It's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Should we move move on? Should I get you some Hyrox results? Yes. Give me some Hyrox results because it was the big Hyrox event this weekend. You was it there. It was. I was chatting to, I know we've briefly mentioned Myra, but I was chatting to a few people, Alan, and... As you remember, we've been at High Rocks from the start. Yeah. Yeah. We we're not that's not a flex, it's just the way way it worked because our good friend Emma Waring said, You need to check this thing out. It's like, you know what? It sounds like it sounds like fun. Let's go do it. We we knew of it thanks to um off school racing media and Jen was gonna do it anyway. But could you predict, Alan, that about 19 months ago, where me, um, Jen, Mike Nolan and Claire Simpson went and did some media for UK OCR. There was, I think, 700 people total there, and we'd finished by five. Yeah, yeah, you had, yeah. Could you predict that no, like I said, 19 months later, there'd be 7,000 athletes at an event? Mate, it has grown phenomenal. It's grown that quick. Um, I think it might have even took IROX by surprise. I think they've seen a few teething problems with the numbers they're getting now. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think scalability is always hard, as you as you know. You, you know, Alan, you're a race director, and if you put a cap on your races anyway, but mm-hmm. if you didn't, and suddenly you know a thousand people turned up, it would take you by surprise. M- massively, uh, we put caps on ours because we know what we can handle. You know, um, and we're, we're going to talk about a farmyard jam a little bit later, but a farmyard jams cut. Um, it was always capped at less than 100, but it's now capped at a little bit less due to the, the medals that we've ordered. But do you think, I don't want to slate IROX off with this, but sometimes when you're in business and you're doing something purely for, not purely for the money, but money's a massive driving factor, you would keep on going and going and going and get as much out of it while you can. Do you think they've become a, a victim of their own success in this area, that they've, they've gone to some great events? We're talking about the Olympia here. That stadium's not going to be cheap. You know no, I mean? the the arena was probably not cheap, and I can see what you mean, Alan. Particularly with this race in particular, we will touch on it, Alan. Uh, yeah, because we do we praise people when we do well, and we discuss things which are a bit are a bit not controversial, but need discussing. When the two day event was announced, the whole selling point to the people who have been with Hyrox from the start was this will allow us to have sensible start times for everyone. Yeah, yeah. So almost taking us back to those heady days of 5pm finishes. Yeah, yeah, which is what we all want. Which is what we all want. As an athlete. But at some point, that message 
got torn down or got kind of forgotten when High Rocks worked out that they were going to sell out no matter what. So why not just keep selling tickets? Yeah. And, th- and this is what I'm saying is, is you can make 10,000 profit, 10,000 pound profit, or you can make 20,000 pound profit, you know, at an event and that extra. And, and I'm just, I mean, I'm not saying they're making that much. I don't know how much they're making. I'm just, I'm just throwing figures out there, but you can double your profit is what I'm trying to say by just staying open longer. And it feels to me, I guess this is what they've done. Potentially. And of course, you've then have to ask, are you putting short term profit or long term gain? Which is what a lot, a lot of companies do. And we, we know this, you know, um, you you deal with it in your day job. People, we, it's called build, building up the book, isn't it? Um, yeah. And sometimes it's it's a preparation for sale. I'm not, I don't want people to jump on this and say, I'm, I, I don't think they are going to sell. I, don't, I think I was there for a long time. But will they go, will they go um, what's the word? Public? Do you think they'll go public and put shares out? I don't think so. It's probably worth pointing out that High Rocks are not actually owned by the creators. Right. In Front, which is a sports marketing company, I can talk about it because it was announced to, to market, so it's free. But In Front, which is a sports marketing, like a massive multinational, actually own the majority shares. Oh, right. So it is a, it's, it is a public. Um, companies in terms of it's owned by the public then? No, or it's private. Companies. It's right. private company, but it's owned by private equity. So it's right. not it's not um, owner-owned. That sounds wrong. Sorry, director-owned or whatever you call it. Yeah. So that, that company is always looking for return on investment then, aren't they? That's why they'll do this. They're looking for return on investment, but they're just shareholders at the end of the day. They can't make day-to-day decisions. No. But yeah, I, I can see what you say. I hope... That it was just a case of them thinking, look, we need to give, we've got so many people, we need to give them all the taste of high rocks and let's do it. I, I hope that was the case. I hope it wasn't a case of thinking, oh, we can make, like you said, we can double our profits by just simply opening um, longer. Was it 7,000 over both days or 7,000 each day? Of uh, seven thousand of both days, so I think they do have a real maximum capacity. Unlike, say, a tough mudder or a Spartan, where in theory you can just push people out um, because you're in the great outdoors, although you then get um, queues at obstacles. Um, I do think the realistic limit for a high rocks event is probably about three thousand. If that, you know, some events like Manchester is probably two thousand. You know how they put. Um the elites outlast. And I get sometimes why they do this, because if you've got elites who run faster, it means you can usually finish that little bit earlier. But if they put the elites and the best runners out first, could they not then shorten the start times, early doors? So what you would do is you shorten the start times, early doors, maybe put the relays out last, but shorten the start times, early doors. So you'd actually get more waves in of the, the fun runners, age group runners whatever you want to call them um, you could potentially but you have to bear in mind that hyrox pro is just a name yeah yeah it is just a name yes the first couple of waves are going to be your elite of your elite but you're still going to have people doing the pro who will take a couple of hours like me yeah <laughs> like like you but yeah so you you do have to bear that in mind and honestly the reason we put the men out last is logistics right just because they're faster and they can get around quicker no, it's for weights. Right. It's um, what they tend to do. It's, it's both logistics and, or oh, what's that word with an A? Um, aesthetics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what they do is they start with the middle weights, which are the uh, used for female pro, male doubles and mixed doubles and male open. Yeah. Then they can take off the weights for the ladies. Right. And then they'll throw the men's pro weights on um, at the end. Right, right. I just, I just, I saw a comment from um, Tom Hogan that turned around and just said it felt very slow because it was very congested. Yeah, it was. Of all, bear in mind that Tom was um, running doubles. It's always going to be congested doubles. Right. And it was always going to be congested with a free lap. I think that's the main issue: is it was a free lap course. But then the. the, the... The arena size dictates that, doesn't it? Exactly. All you could have done differently is open the doors. Yeah. yeah. And send people down the stairs, which they might not have appreciated. No. 
there's not many places where you can get like a one or like a one lap course would be ideal. But then again, would you also lose that that tightness and that people? There's always some something happening. You know, you're seeing your friends every three laps. You're seeing someone. You know, would you lose all of that side of it? It's a tough question. It is, and potentially, I think the ideal is the two lap. The only slight problem with the two lap is the fact that you have to be in an exhibit um, area. So you have to be in an NEC or an Excel where you can basically make more space if you need more space because you've got yeah. a whole lot of lot of space. So you, you do kind of lose a little of the charm of Manchester because Manchester is a gorgeous building. The Olympia is a beautiful, beautiful building. And we're coming from an OCR background. Part of the reason we run these races is because you get to do it in stunning locations. Yeah, yeah. So, honestly, Alan, um, to answer the question you asked at the start of this uh, this long discussion, <laughs> I don't know the answer. I don't know if they are putting profits, short-term profits or long-term gain. I'm not sure. We saw it with Spartan. We saw it with Tough Mudder. They did exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember T-Shirt Gate? I do, yes, very much so. So we had T-Shirt Gate, Tough Mudder, and they lost their way, and they now appear to be coming back. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's growing pains, but we'll see. Should, I, should we go through the results, and then should we move on to, I think, our final topic? Yes, right away. So in the Mail Pro, there was 215 finishers in the Mail Pro, but amongst them, the number one was Harry Thompson, with a time of 59.34. Um, Joffrey of Rosen, I've got that name wrong. Sorry, Joffrey, but you're probably not listening um, because you speak <laughs> French, so hopefully you're not listening. Uh, he got a time of 1 hour and 12 seconds. And then friend of the show, Tony Revel, with a time of 1 hour 34 seconds. Well done, Tony. Well, none of those moved them up into the top 15, though, do they? Nope. No, no one got into the Elite 15. I, I think Tom Hogan's got a little bit of a witch doctor thing going on at the moment. He's <laughs> uh, putting pins in everyone. Yeah. In the in the Elite Ladies, uh, 78 results, which still quite a lot of ladies, you find, Alan, the Ladies Doubles had more people in it. Did it really? Wow. Yeah, but the Ladies Doubles does really, really well. Uh, that's why they did that on the Monday alongside the Men's Open. They were the two biggest, so they kind of did them. And then you had the relay, which is traditionally the smallest. Yeah. So anyway, ladies' results, um, Zara Piergiani, um was 109.05. Then we had Kate Davey with 110.10. And then Kerry Hewitt with 110.32. Um, Zara Piergiani, uh, that was her first ever pro race. Oh, wow. She, and I think, I want to say it was Kate's uh, second or third. Right. But she'd ran, she'd ran open before, though, so it wasn't her first ever high rocks. It wasn't her first ever high rocks, uh, but she'd run open. Uh, our good friend, um, Sasha, uh, from Epic um, Fitness OCR, um, she got a time of 115.30, which put, placed a six overall and the age group winner of the 45 to 49 year old category. See, Alan, there's hope for you yet. <laughs> There's no hope for me, Ian. Never been any hope for me. <laughs> there's not. Oh, actually, there's a couple of, of top of topics left. Uh, we'll move on to Family Out of Jan last, but ice tub questions? Oh, yeah, I, I've had a couple of questions. Um, as everyone, well, not everyone knows, but we, um, I bought an ice tub. Um, it is called an ice tub as well. So I bought a, an ice tub. And we have got it on our discount page, which is linktree forward slash discounts. When you go on there, we have got a discount code. Um, but a few people have bought them. So I think our discount codes let you out for £68, um, which is at less than our price. And the question of the question is, how do I keep it cold? So first of all, I put a bag of ice um, in mine once a week. Uh, and that, and it just you put everything else on because it's insulated top and everything else. It does keep it cold. It does help at this time of year. And I would say put it in a shaded place as well. Um, if it's in your garden, you don't want the sun on it. Another reason why you don't want the sun in it is because sun creates algae. So although this has got a top on it and it keeps all that out of it, you do need to keep it clean. So I put um, tablets in mine. You can buy them off Amazon. They're just water purifying tablets, not to drink it, but to keep it clean, like chlorine type tablets. And I, I've had it, what, four weeks now? And I've got to admit, I haven't actually emptied it 
and cleaned it out because I've got no algae on there. The water's still fresh. It's clear. Um, so, yes, that's what I do. That, and that's all I do to do it. I just I clean it out. Just I, I, Well, I'm going to plan on cleaning it out in the next couple of weeks, but keep the tablets in it, keep it cold, put the ice in once a week. So, yeah, um, it I, I think it works. I've recovered quite quickly, I think, from my 60 miler. I've used it four times this week. Um since I did it, since I did my six miles or so last week, I used it four times. I do think it's helped recovery. Fergal Keeney put me onto this. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's amazing. Um, check out on our our link tree. Not doing it as an advertisement. I want to just let people know about it. Have you got a code for it by any chance, Alan? Yes, it's um, Alan five four nine eight three, and the website to go onto it's it's ice minus score tub dot com. I want to turn around and say. Um, I'll have a quick look. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's ice minus tub dot com. Yeah, ice minus tub. So ice dash tub dot com for yeah, yeah. The minus sign is it a dash? They call it a dash. It, it's a dash. All ice dash tub dot com. Yeah. Ice dash tub. So, and it's Alan. What? Sorry, Alan five four nine eight three. Don't ask me why it's that code. That's the code that they gave me. It's funny. It was, that probably means there's an Alan five four dot one as well or whatever whatever it is there's, there's probably <laughs> anyway should we wrap up with a farmyard jam alan yeah a couple of the questions i've got on farmyard jam so it happens in um three weeks less than three weeks time uh, as this goes out it will actually be two weeks time oh God, it's flying it's coming around so quickly and i'm not ready yeah. for it well i am ready for it actually so um yeah uh farmyard jam a uh, couple of questions couple of things People have asked, will, will there be hot food at the Farmyard Jam? No. This is a self-sufficient race, yeah? There's only 60 of you coming maximum. We couldn't get local hot food people to come and spend all their time cooking for 60 of you. Bring your own um, cooker, whatever you've got, you know, a little camping stove. Cook your own food. Bring your pick, let them cook it. We're absolutely fine with that type of thing. There will be no open fires, but you can do that. Um, the other ones I've got is Kit List. Kit list, whatever you're running. The only kit list we are, we do is you must wear you must have a torch um on you from 7 p.m. to 8 a.m. Whether you turn it on or not, that's absolutely fine. Head torch, chest torch, hand torch, we don't really care. But you must have one on you. Um, and you must have a whistle with you at all times. Other than that, you it's your race. Run your race um however you want to. Why have people got whistles? Are you expecting people to go offside? Um, no, that is just in case at, at night time, you know, it's pitch black, isn't it? And we can't, we can't run us going out and we can't run us coming back. You know, we don't follow them out. So if we've got one missing, um, I want to be able to hear someone whistle if, they, if they've got injured. So it's just the whistle travels quite well. So it's a bit of a safety tool. If you fall down, you get injured, you're on your own, blow your whistle, we will come and find you. Um, it is that simply a yeah. simple, pro, effective tool. Pro tip, turn your head torch on and you won't need your whistle. Yeah, turn your torch on and you won't need your whistle. Well, you wouldn't if you're falling over because we can't we won't see your head torch. No, what I mean is if you've got your head torch on, you, you ain't falling over. No, that's exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and then the last thing is we have only got uh, 10 places left. So I have, and this is because we've, got, we've ordered the medals. So anyone who wants to go... If you know someone's already going, yeah, use the code last chance, it knocks you five pounds off, and then tell your friend you've booked. And then that friend who's already booked can message me, confirm your name, and I'll give your friend a fiver as well. Fantastic. So that's to try and fill up the last 10 places. Last 10 places, yeah. It'd be great if we filled them all up. Um, it's going to go ahead no matter what. Um, it'd be great if we filled them all up. It would give me and Jamie a few beers to, to drink over the weekend. You're looking forward to this, aren't you? Because as an ID, it's such an unusual race. <laughs> I am so... I, I, when we did it last year, so as, uh, talk about last year. Last year was um, the, the trial, and we've taken on board a few things as well. So this year, one of the things we've got, we've we've purchased over 100 um, glow-in-the-dark... What do they call them that you've... you've passed glow around sticks. Your neck? Glow sticks to put on signage. Um, that came out last year. You know, people want to see glow sticks. So we've got 100 glow sticks for the two two days put on sign, signs out there so people can see them. Um, little things like that that came out of it, you know, having the 24 as well as the 48. Um, all these little things we're trying. It's still For us, this is still a bit of a trial. You know, this is having 50 and 60 people is still a trial for us. And we will we will grow it as we 
as we see fit. Um, but we want to go it right. We want to make sure we get things right. So everyone who rocks up this time will be saying to them, "Tell us what. Tell us what we did right. Tell us what we did wrong. What do you want to see? What what makes this this better?" Um, so yeah. Perfect, Alan. And if it really takes off, you can branch out into a farmyard fitness um, race as well. Could you imagine <laughs> a 24-hour race where every lap you had to do, I don't know, 25 wall balls at the end? <laughs> that, that, would be, that would break people in. <laughs> that would just break people too much. We've got some amazing runners coming, though, in. I am people what you would expect to get an, an event that had been going on for such a long time. Um, you know, we've got some absolute quality, amazing runners, and we've got a few things planned. Um, which I'm not gonna let everyone know, but we've got a few things planned to do a bit of promotions on the weekend as well and get everyone's names out there and really, really try and boost it up on that day. Oh, so, yeah, and try and build a community, yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's what it is it's, it's about building the farmyard. We did that, we overload, um, and we're gonna do exactly the same with farmyard jam, it's building a community. Great. Well, Alan, have we got anything else on the notes or should we wrap it up? Um, we are. We always promote every other race that we're in. So on the f- same date as Farmyard Jam, you brought this to my attention. You said don't promote it, but we are. God's Own Backyard, I've got their version, um, which is the last man standing event, on the same date as Farmyard Jam, which is in Leeds. So if you're not going to Farmyard Jam and you just want to run, um, go to God's Own Backyard as well. Okay, p- perfect, Alan. But yeah, you, you're right. I, I I was being a bit, well, mean, to be fair, and you, you set me right. But yeah, Alan, and on that, though, I am going to say it's a good night from me. Andy, and it's a good night from me, everyone. Thank you for listening all. You take care. We'll see you soon. We love you all. Bye.